It's Thursday. We're live. I'm Andy, which means you are at live office hours. It is my happy, happy place to help you build a career you love. Welcome, everybody. Andy LaCivita, award-winning author of The Hiring Prophecies, and I am thrilled to have you today. We've got a fun and action-packed session. I got note cards this thick. <laughs> I think I set a record because we're going to be talking about video interviewing, and I'm going to make this as fun as possible and give you my best 20 tips. Yes, 20. You're going to love this. So we're going to dive, we're going to dive right in today. I, I do want to make one little announcement, though, as I see you all shuffling in. I love that you're here with me today. Jump into the chat. Tell me who you are. Tell me where you're from. Tell me what you do. Let me know what your issues are. If you've got, uh, if you got any questions, give me the question marks in the beginning of the uh, uh, of the comment so I can find it. If you're a boot camper, give me a pound boot camper. And if you have not seen yet, my little firstborn baby is out and running around town again, and you can get interview intervention, communication that gets you hired. Can you see this? For $7 shipping and handling, that's it. I bought the $29 book for you. I'm giving you the $27 ebook and audio book, and the fulfillment company has them in the proper spot in the warehouse, so we are taking orders now. So there's a link in the description. I'll tell you a little bit more about this when we're done, but I wanna get into the video interviewing, because this, this, is, this is pretty fun. And uh, I get a ton of questions about this one, and more and more companies are using this now. And they're using it um, honestly because it's it's convenient. And and they got executives flying all over the world. Sometimes you're in different cities or states than they are. It's a lot easier for them. They can pile a bunch of people into a room. So I know it's it's a little uh, less comfortable than actually being able to engage with somebody. So I, I thought it was about time. I get so many questions about this. I figured let's do it. So this past weekend, what I typically do on Fridays or Sundays whenever I have time, depending on what my schedule looks like, is I think about the week that I'm about to go into. And, and actually, I, I get excited, <laughs> excited to do that stuff. I mean, I love Mondays. I don't know if you saw my I Love Mondays video, uh, my little vignette the other day. Uh, but I thought about video interviewing, and I wanted, I, you know, I didn't want to just tell you, you know, do this, talking to the camera, here's put the lights on, and so on. I, li I literally thought about, what do I do? Every Thursday with you, I go through a checklist like this. Uh, I, I literally do this every week. So every week you have a video interview with me. I need to be prepared and, and these are the kind of things you're gonna need to be able to do. So, so let's go through them. I have 20 of them. Most of them will apply to virtually everybody, but, uh, but, but if you do these 20 things, I guarantee you're gonna come off looking pretty pretty good uh, pretty good so the first the first one and I broke these up into five I broke these up into five categories the first one is the prep and I'm talking about the interview prep you need to do all the same stuff I want you to do everything I've already told you in the previous 17 live office hours in the previous 100 recorded videos in the 400 posts and all the things that I've shot out into the world that I've taught you, do those. All the same principles apply to video interviews. It, it, it's no different. The, the, you know, just understand that the video interview is about just having a different medium. It's not about you behaving differently. So, so that's, that's the first thing. So, so step number one, to give us a little warm up and a running start, do, do all the things that I've instructed you know, it's the same, the same, the same techniques. Now let's get into to the setup. So the actual, the setup and the environment that you're going to go into. One of the things you need to be really careful about is your webcam. Your webcam. So I'm using a Logitech 1080, you know, 1080 922 or something. Gives us a pretty good pretty good picture but you certainly can use your your laptop or your your phone or there's a number of different things that you can use it's all okay it, you don't need to worry about you know how clear you are as far as you know the level of granularity your 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 webcam on your on your computer or your MacBook or your Dell or whatever will be just fine the most important thing about the camera is do you notice that when I when we have our live office hour sessions, 
I'm, I'm even with the camera, more or less, more or less. The big, the big mistake that people make is, you know, they look down at the camera. How many, how many times out there are you on, you know, a, a web chat with somebody or a webinar or something of that nature, and they're looking down and they're, they're talking down to you? Um, they're not probably not really talking down to you, but it, it, it gives off that impression. So I, I don't, I don't want you to run the risk of that. And I, you know, you don't want to be looking up either. So you want to try to get, get it on, on the right uh, plane with your eyes so that you're looking at them level when you're, and we're going to get to how to, you know, talk to the camera here in, in a few minutes, but, but just kind of, you know, get it eye level and there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with stacking, uh, your, your, your laptop on, on some books I have a little, um, before, I have a, a wide monitor. I have a 27, basically just so you know my setup, I have a 27-inch monitor. Some of you have probably seen it. When I shoot videos facing, facing the sunroom, you probably see it in the background. Um, but, but, you know, when I had a, just a 13-inch uh, uh, little MacBook Pro or something, that I, and my, mine is behind there, but I would just put it on a little stand, or a little stand, and and it raised it, and it and it was it worked great. So that's this is this is important. You gotta you gotta get that that uh, that webcam in the right spot. The next thing is your lighting. So you can have lamps or you can have sun. Either way is either way is okay, and it obviously depends on what time of day you're doing this. Um, but the important thing about the lighting is that the lighting needs to be behind the camera facing you. So I don't know if you, you know, when we, when we do this every week, uh, my setup is there are lights on the other side of me and depending on the time of day, because I am in an office that has a lot of lights, sometimes it, it wreaks a little havoc and I have a little difficulty with the lighting, which varies, but in your environment, Wherever you are, as long as you're facing a window and the camera is in front of the window, that'll work. Uh, some of the videos that you guys have probably seen from me running around the last couple days, I stand right there and I just I look at the camera uh, that's right in front of me, and I don't even have lights in front of me. I just have the sun. Or you could be sitting, by, you know, near a window. That all works. The important thing is you want the light behind the camera. Um, if I didn't have lights behind that camera and I was shooting like this out of my webcam, it would it would be it would be blistering white because of all that light behind me. So you just want to be careful that the sun is in front of you or the windows in front of you or your lamps or lights are in front of you and you don't need big powerful expensive lights. Most most bright lights will will work. You can put a lamp in front of you if if you want. So that that'll work. So I just want to make sure that you are you're mindful of that. Then we want to talk about behind you. So behind me, there's not a lot of commotion. You see some books over there. Uh, you know, this is this is part of my desk here. There's it's a built-in area. So there's not a lot for you to see. There's there's really not a lot uh, to distract you. Uh, the the room in the in the back, you can't really see a lot of the furniture. Actually, I'm still waiting for furniture for that room. But uh, but you just you want it clean, so you don't you don't want a lot of stuff behind them behind you that is going to draw their attention away from you so you don't want pictures with prints posters all that other kind of stuff that could be distracting and you want to be careful if you have a window behind you if there's anything going on behind you as well so you just want to be careful of that so that's that's number number four number five the audio now I have a microphone here. It's an Audio Technica. It's a it's a fairly powerful microphone. You don't need anything like that, um, I cert unless you have one. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, inexpensive microphones that you can use. You can also use your your computer microphone as well. Sometimes you see people they've got the earbuds in. Uh, that's okay. Uh, I don't mind it for a casual webinar, but for an interview, I would prefer that there's nothing around you, and I also don't want things falling out of your ears, things of that nature. So, so I would just, I would just either use your computer microphone or 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 or, or get a, or get an inexpensive one. Here's another one that a lot of people forget about: the internet. Obviously, you're going to need the internet and a good download speed. Uh, my guess is you're doing this in your home or maybe your office, depending. But the thing that you want to make sure is that you are Etherneted into the internet. Don't rely on Wi-Fi. So every time I set this up for you, I actually turn off my Wi-Fi so I'm wired in so I can give myself the best, the best signal strength. 
it's 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 really important that you uh, that you do that. I want to make you know I want to make sure that you've got the most the best speed that you can because nothing is worse. Uh, you know how when you're on a cell phone and the, the sound keeps breaking up. Um, it's the same kind of thing. In, in you know the screen will will start to freeze. I do coaching calls. Uh, whenever uh, I do coaching calls with somebody who is in my one-on-one -on -one coaching and they're out of town, they're, they don't live in my area, we do like Google Hangouts or, or Skype or whatever they like and, and, it, and it becomes problematic sometimes if, if they don't, uh, if they have a lot of apps running and we're going to talk about that in a second, but, but just make sure that you are wired in, your internet speed is, is good and one of the other things that can help is shutting all the apps on your computer. You would be amazed at like my time machine backup that auto backs up that you forget is on Dropbox, other things that are running in the background. So I turn all that off when we do this. The other thing that I do is I actually, um, I'm watching to make sure that, that all of this is working properly and where I see you in the chat and I watch, I'm watching to make sure that my signal strength is, is, um, is solid. I'm using a, a Google Chrome browser and I, I, I have an empty browser basically. I don't have a lot of widgets or extensions or other things on it that are running that will interfere. All of these little things contribute to stuff that can go wrong, right? No, nothing breaks my heart more than when, I, when the internet craps out or my computer craps out on you guys. So, so just be careful. You wanna make sure that you shut your apps and unplug the telly, unplug the telly. I know it sounds, it sounds silly, but you know, the, the, the telly starts ringing or your, your phone's buzzing or whatever, and it could become, it could become extremely distracting. Let's roll on number nine. Make sure you're sitting in a comfortable chair. I don't know if you know this. I don't sit in a chair. I'm actually on a Swiss ball right now. It's my favorite purple Swiss ball. It's been with me for a long time. I haven't sat on a desk chair since 14 years now, uh, 15 years, something like that. But just something comfortable, so you're not you're not moving around, you're not slouching, but it'll keep you pretty consistent with, um, you know, with the camera, and and so that there's not a lot of variance, and and you know there's not a lot of distractions between you, the chair, the table, and all that good stuff. Then let's talk about the table here. Oop, for a second, um, you know, one of the things that can be very, you know, distracting is your, your table or your desk. You wanna make sure that it is clutter free, except for the things that you need, um, you know, that we're gonna talk about here in a second, but, but just make sure that your desk is spotless, except for your notes, and do, do not forget your resume. Do not forget your resume. I wanna say that twice, because it's easy to do. You, you assume that they have it, and when, they, when somebody says to you, hey, can you walk me through your resume and you don't have it, or hey, I was noticing on your resume and you don't have it, uh, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a little embarrassing and it'll make it a lot more difficult and in a lot of cases you're gonna start to panic. So have your notes, have your questions, have your resume, cover letter, anything you sent them and anything on them, anything on them. The other thing you can do if you've got little bios or whatever, you could tape them up or whatever, put them on the wall uh, so that it, you know, you're not noticing. I don't use, aside from these note cards, I don't use notes for these. I, I, I know what I wanna tell you, but, uh, but I know that you know, it's a lot for you to handle what you need to say to them, what you wanna ask them, and then remembering their backgrounds if you've done your research and the things about the company. So you, know, you can have some notes there if, if it doesn't get too distracting for you, but you want your desk to be very clean. You don't wanna be shuffling around for stuff that you cannot find, and then you know, you know, I play with the chickens before we we uh, we start this, and my dogs have to go in the crate. So we well, actually, they're with my wife in the living room right now. She's home ill today. But um, but your pets, I don't care if they're cats, dogs, fish, whatever. Just make sure they're in the right spot, and just keep it so that they are you know out of the way and will not you know start barking when the UPS guy comes like they've done a few times for me. But anyway. Just lock them up. All right, let's get you camera ready. So you got the setup. You're prepped, you got the setup. You know the environment. Let's get you camera ready. And I wore a black shirt for you today, your dress. Uh, this is kind of an interesting thing. So most of the time I wear 
solid colors and I generally some man or woman doesn't matter solid colors appear better on the camera what I also have noticed is darker colors generally are better it doesn't mess with the camera if you wear whites it typically washes you out if you wear stripes it can be a little noisy now sometimes I wear stripes because I only have so many shirts that I can put on and I'm in front of you a couple times a week every week but for you just dress in solids dress in solids try not to have too many colors on if you got a jacket on or something that's cool too I would just try to make it as neutral as possible and I would make it darker rather than lighter so don't uh, you know and when I do television shows uh, when I actually go on TV uh, the producers always tell me hey don't wear white so I never do so you'll never see me on TV with white ever so just watch watch the dress now uh, so ladies on this one you ain't gonna need to worry but makeup your makeup is gonna be just fine but dudes <laughs> my brothers I'm telling you uh, you know you I'm not saying you got to put makeup on I don't wear makeup but but uh, you want to make sure if you have lights on that you need in the house in order for you to do this and the lights are right over you you were gonna be very shiny so I remember one one time I don't know, year or two ago I was doing something with the McQuaig Institute and I was their recruitment expert on a show and I was doing this in my house and it was about five o'clock and it was dark out and my setup at that time was much different than my setup now and I had lights just to like a light in the middle of the room and my face was all shiny and it was about 10 to 5 <laughs> I called my wife and I she wasn't she was on her way home from work I called her up and I said oh my god honey I've got a shiny face I need some of that rouge or whatever you have powder so I went into her bathroom and sure enough I dabbed a little on my forehead and nobody can tell so you know if you need if you need to put it on go ahead but it'll it'll be it'll be more this it'll be more disruptive if you got lights over you um, and and everything will become much more shiny even if you don't have um, very oily skin so you just you want to be careful and you might have to get in touch with your feminine side guys but do it if it helps and then another thing about shininess glasses uh, it's okay to wear glasses if they are glare proof if they are not glare proof uh, you can have a lot of rainbows and a lot of other stuff so I, I I'm always careful about uh, sometimes I'll use my reading glasses but just you want to be really careful with your glasses now let's talk about practice all right so next next section let's talk about how to practice for this so you're doing all your prep you got all your notes you know you, you've gone through you've rehearsed your questions you got all that stuff going on so the biggest thing for you is to talk to the camera so it's you are gonna blow away any interviewer and all the other candidates if you can actually talk to the camera and not talk to the screen so if I sat here and looked at you and did all this all day um, that that wouldn't be nearly as effective for an hour as me looking at you and talking into the camera and explaining that I want you to talk to the camera so you will be amazed at how quickly you get good at that just make sure that when you are responding you are talking to the camera and as a matter you are looking at the camera and as a matter of fact you also if you can look at the camera when they're talking if you can get your setup so that you can catch them in, in your peripheral vision and they're speaking to you and you're looking at them that's that's a that's your home run trust me when I tell you you will you will come across much more effective they will feel much more connected to you than the other candidates if you can maintain that eye contact through the camera this is a big deal it would probably be the single tip I would give you to say this is what will score you the most points so practice that and then and then what I would do is get a buddy or a spouse or whoever family member and actually get them in another room or across town or wherever they are and 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 practice have a little Skype call or a Google Hangouts or whatever um, but you wanna you wanna practice with your computer 
and your computer lens. You know, FaceTiming and all that other stuff is cool, but this will be much more effective. So, so you want to make sure that you're practicing with a buddy or a spouse. I would definitely, definitely do that. Now, let's get into the actual execution. So, I mentioned this one. When you do this, so I want you to practice the eye contact and I want you to make sure that you maintain the eye contact through the session. Through the session. Big, big deal. Big, big deal. Then I want to make sure you're wearing your best smile. A lot. It's okay to be serious. I'm serious with you sometimes, but you got, you got to make this as fun as possible and you need a real smile and it, it needs to come off as though you're enjoying this. Um, you know, I love this and I want you to love the opportunity to interview with that company through the camera. I know it's not the same as being there, but smiling a lot, it, trust me, I mean, this, is, this, is, this is a huge, huge deal, huge deal. So make sure you're smiling. And then number 20, don't end without getting their email address. It's easy to forget. It's easy to forget. You got them, get it, have them spit it out to you, and then make sure you jot it down, and then within 24 hours, like I taught you, make sure you send that email to them, copy the HR person or the recruiter or whoever, and, and just, but don't forget it. You're obviously not gonna get their business card, but if they escape and you don't get that email address, now you have to contact the recruiter, you have to get it that way, or you have to take guess, which is worse. So just wanna make sure that you are doing that. So, 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 so keep in mind, there's a, there's, a, there's a practicing to this, there's a setup to it, right? You wanna make sure you got the right kind of environment, you wanna get camera ready, you wanna practice, and then you wanna execute it effectively. So those are my tips. That's what I go through every week. And uh, so, you know, that's where this stuff comes from. So I hope you, I hope you liked that. Um, how are we doing? 106 people, this is great. 21 minutes in, we got 40 minutes for the Q&A. If you're loving this stuff, folks, give me, give me the, give me the, the thumbs up. Make sure you're, you're giving me the click, click the like button. Give me a share where I'm going to take questions till, till noon my time. Don't forget, don't forget, you can access, let's see, turn, I always, I always mess up the way I present the book. Um, but interview intervention, folks, if you have not heard, this book was released in 2012. I just released it. Um, my, you know, our orders are are blowing up our computers. I'm sending it out for free. Uh, I bought it. It's twenty nine. It's twenty nine dollars. I bought the book for you. Uh, I have a twenty seven dollar ebook and audio book digital collection, and my chapter notes and my guides are in there. Uh, you get that with this as well. It's free. Uh, it's just we're having a ton of fun and people are really taking advantage of this all you need to do is click the link for seven bucks I will ship it anywhere in the world seven bucks so even if you're international and one thing one thing I you know I want to give a shout out to all the international folks I knew you know I we go through the uh, I see the the folks here and you know I know you guys are, are from all over the place I had no idea I literally had no idea how international uh, my community was until the last three or four days when we really started analyzing geographically where people were located because now with the onset of distributing the book, we're starting to see you know, where people want it sent. And I'm also seeing um, this, this interview intervention relaunch team that I created. Um, all of you that are on here that signed up for the launch team you got an email i notified you we had over 5000 people who wanted to be on it we selected 500 we a mixture of of international folks and us folks and we we're we're we got the group going and we're having a ton of fun it, what what i noticed was of the 5000 people who submitted their names 38% were international that blew me away i mean i didn't i figured maybe 10 or 20% but almost 40% of uh, you know, the people in our community are international, so I love that. And I, I know we have a lot of people from Australia and Europe and Canada and Asia. I mean, like, it's, it's all over. It's just crazy, crazy fun. So, so thank you for that. I, I'm glad we can, we can shrink the world, and, and I just I love hearing your stories, and 
it's just fantastic stuff. So let's uh, let me head over and see who is here. My mother is here. Paul is here from the UK. Ingrid is from the US. Arpi is from Hungary. Ingrid's got a question. Oh, this is great. Great folks. Kara's here. She's from down the block. All right, let's let's roll to it. Ingrid, uh, you have two interview options. Option one is your preferred company, and option two is your runner up. Option two offered you a job. Okay, awesome. After two weeks in the job, option one offers you the job. Do you accept or decline? Ingrid, that is a fantastic question. And uh, not, to, not to be funny here, it's, it's not one that I can answer. Of course, I'm going to give you some kind of context. I'm just going to say no and move on. Um, it is very, very difficult for me to assess that because it's your personal situation. And folks, this happens. This happens and nothing is more gut-wrenching for an employer who thinks they have somebody and you know, you, you're off and running, they've invested time and they've cut all their other candidates loose because they had to tell them positions been filled. But when it comes down to it, I hate to say it this way, you need to be, well, no, I don't hate to say it this way, but it's true. You need to be true to yourself and the only thing worse would be you staying at the first job and then constantly looking over your shoulder constantly questioning whether you made the right choice, kicking yourself in the butt. I'm not one that um, looks back much. I, I make my decision and I, I commit to it. Um, and you are now faced with another decision to make. So, you know, I also say you got to make the decision uh, at the time with the best and most accurate information that you have. You now have new information. And in this situation, uh, if it was me and there was a you know there was a huge difference and I really wanted to work for option one, I would go to the new job because and that is speaking from experience that I do not want you to be sorry that you, or or a disgruntled employee or wondering what could have been when you were given the opportunity and it's uncomfortable and I would hope that you would tackle it like a pro and give you know give this company that you are about to leave some type of ample time to you know to uh, to hire somebody to replace you so it's you know it's it's a delicate situation but I without knowing all the factors uh, but if you know my my, my, my 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 response would be I would hate for you to miss out on something that you truly love because because the timing wasn't perfect that's 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 what I'd say Okay, Mark Peckney is in from St. Louis. Mark Peckney is a boot camper, and he's on his new job, and he is kicking butt, and I love it, and buddy, uh, and we're going to make that Friday work in uh, June. All right, Renaissance Man, a.k.a. Benny the Bull. Glad you are here. Uh, hey, Mom, let's see. Susan Wines, great. Uh, Renaissance man, hang in there, man. I know it, but you got an interview with Google and you learned a lot and channel that into the place you should be, which isn't Google. Um, Michelle Middleton, boot camper, great to see you. Alpha Mega Radio, hello. Wilma's a boot camper. Hey, Gearhead, good to see you back. Daniel Gomez, good to see you from Florida. Kristen, brand new. I would say you're the newest boot camper, even though you joined yesterday afternoon, but there's been a couple more people that joined. So congratulations. Glad you're in the program. Um, wonderful to talk to you the other day. Angela Thomas, Jules Z. My favorite person in Cleveland is here. Great to see you. She's a boot camper. All right. Mark is a boot camper. J4J from Chicago. Wonderful. All right, let me see. Nick, good to see you, bud. And Cecilia is took her question back. Robert from New York. Roquea from Mexico. All right, let me see. Chris Johnson from New Jersey. All right, great. Oh man, you guys are you guys are fantastic. All right, South Central Tech Mallory, great to have you. Nice W75. I got a question. Okay. How can an external fairly competent in a targeted external fairly oh uh, external fairly compete in a targeted company 
when it's discovered their job ads are only posted for PR purposes. Job already marked for internal feels like a waste of time. Int that is an interesting uh, point. And just so everyone knows, uh, just uh, and it, unfortunately, this is a sad fact. Companies, companies, um, oops, sorry. Companies need to post their jobs, uh, and that there's legal requirements that go along with this. And um, ca candidly, um, organizations should want to hire from within. That's a good company. They want to grow their people. They want to give them opportunities to develop. What I would do. What I would do if I was going into an organization that, um, and nice W, I don't know your name, but um, but there's there's the small companies that put the put the job postings out. They generally are actually recruiting for somebody outside the company. Larger organizations are more susceptible to wanting to have somebody internally apply for the position and and and. And give that person the job, or basically somebody that, or, or uh, more appropriately, somebody that they know and trust and have seen a track record, because that's a better a better bet. But what I would do, so as to that you're not wasting your time, is when you submit your resume or contact the uh, recruiter or get contacted by the person from the company, I would ask, um, what you know, what does the candidate pool currently look like? And where do I, you know, where do I fit in that? And, you know, how many external candidates are you dealing with? How many internal candidates are you dealing with? And and I would ask for that. Uh, it's it's appropriate to folks. It's appropriate to ask what does the situation look like? Um, how, you know what? Because that's only fair for the employer to tell you because you are running your job search and they owe you that. They they need to tell you, hey, it's you know it. We got three candidates. Two are internal. Uh, you're the external candidate or whatever, and this process is going to take X days or weeks or whatever it might be. That is appropriate. It's proper etiquette. It's also you need to reciprocate. I'm currently in a search. I'm interviewing with these companies for these positions. Here's where I am. You know, I'm in the first interview here. I'm in the third interview there or whatever it is. But um, short of just asking what the situation looks like and then trying to accommodate or overcome uh, you know those internal candidates is what what do those internal candidates you know are there any particular gaps in those internal candidates and just be upfront about it that's that's how I would that's how I would handle that Ivan great to see you uh, the best way to get a job is to have a relative uh, yeah that's a good way too Cecilia Steen hi Andy how do you hold off giving an answer to a job offer of a less desirable job waiting for an answer from a from a job you really want. So with Ingrid and with you know with with nice W75, um, all of you, I, I would you know my my approach to that is when if you if you get into an interviewing process in the beginning, be very uh, open about where you are with other organizations along the way as you go through the process, as you progress with your other uh, with your other employers. You should be updating all of the employers as to where you stand. It's it's very important that you do that because most employers, if they love you, will accelerate or decelerate the interviewing process to accommodate. Because if they love what nothing is worse. So I, as a recruiter, I think most of you know. If you don't, I'm a recruiter and have been for a good number of years, and I've interacted with hundreds of companies, and we've placed many hundreds of people in jobs. We also ha have handled folks that were in the process but decided not to go with our client or move on to an and nothing is worse for companies when they find out midway through the process that you took yourself out because you went somewhere else when what they would have done is accelerated the process, got you to the same point, given you an offer and tried to secure you. It happens a lot. So believe me, companies would appreciate that. So what I would do, Cecilia, in your case is at this moment, if you have not already, go to the employer and simply say, I have another offer. I have another offer and I need to respond by. Is there anything that you can share with me that would help me either give them a more accurate respond by date or some inclination as to where I stand. 
because what you don't want to do is hold the one off and then the other one, you know, then tick them off and then this one doesn't give you the the opportunity. And and so I'm a, I'm a big fan of just communicating, letting them know, asking them. It, you can do it politely. It's not threatening. Um, they they won't get defensive. They will appreciate it if you handle it properly and just say what I would say is, I want to work here. I want to work here. I have an offer from this other organization and I need to get back to them. I need to be fair to them because you're also holding up their process for other candidates. So that's how I would handle it. I'm, I'm, and I think all, you know, you guys, a lot of you know me pretty well. My answer in, in all these kind of questions is always, I always want you to be open and honest and, you know, handle it professionally and it will, you know, they'll do you a solid. All right, Mallory. Okay, so Mallory, this is a great question, folks, because we're seeing a lot of this, and some of my boot campers are going through this. She says, so I have to, a video interview where the questions are pre-recorded. so do I speak to a real person? What should I do to stand out? So Mallory, I, there are some different ways to do this, but in the video ones, you look at the camera, and I, you can imagine, try to imagine somebody sitting there somebody sitting there and, and you, you speaking to them. The, the, one of the things that I love about the live office hours and why I changed to this format from those weekly recorded videos is because you're here and I can talk to you. And even though I can't see you, I feel you. You know what I mean? Um, when, I would, when I would shoot the video and I would record it for you, uh, it wasn't the same. It, it, it wasn't the same for me. I, uh, I mean, and, and, and videos are cool. And I know that they go on and get circulated, but the engagement is important. So you have to manufacture that engagement when you know you get the question and it flat. Some of these they audio, audio, you know, the questions audio, and some of these the questions just typed and it, you know they give it to you, and then you got you know so many minutes to record. Uh, some of them are open, then you just hit the button. Uh, but there's many different ways that they go about doing this. But literally, you know, imagine that you are speaking to a person. And, and try to connect with them, that will come through. That will come through. And the other thing too is they're videoing you. So if you do, you know, you do all, you do all the, these things, um, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna come off well. All right, true. Do you think being too engaged and interested in the position during the interview can backfire? Well, um, what I would say there, what I would say there is, uh, you know, in most cases, no. Um, you know, you've got to read the room, uh, read the person. And I'm not saying I want you to go at that person's level. So if that person's really shy and quiet, I don't want you to get shy and quiet. I want you to be you. Um, but I also want you to, you know, I don't want you to be too over the top. Uh, so so it, the level of enthusiasm, there's a difference between enthusiasm and desperation. If you, you give off the right level of enthusiasm where you actually care and they can see that and feel that, you'll, you'll score great. If it looks fake because it's just so much, they'll see that too. So it's, it, it, anything can backfire. Anything can backfire. You could be too one way or the other. There's no question. Uh, but I would, I would, you know, try to be, just be sincere, be enthused, and ex, ex, be explicit and effusive about it. All right, uh, Carla Stokes, good to see you. Uh, what is a sufficient, safe percentage of qualifications to possess comparing to those listed on the posting? FYI, I'm sure you have a video that discusses this. <laughs> I do. <laughs> actually, actually, um, here's here's what I would say. Um, actually, Carla, I, uh, I have never said it this way before, ever, never. This is what I'm about to tell you. I've never said in anything, anywhere, in all my training, in all my coaching, in all my anything. When you look at a job description, and, and, and Carla, by the way, I'm, I'm, commenting, I'm commenting on this as though you, are an indiv you all are looking at a job description and you want to submit your resume and you're trying to figure out whether you should submit it based on the percentage. Now, percentage is not a number I can give you because 
if I have only three requirements, then, you know, you got to have at least two of them. You know what I mean? So, but if I've got 10, you might not need to have 10. So I'm not going to give you a percentage. I'm going to, I'm going to give you something else. I'm going to give you a way to look at a job description and know whether to submit your resume. So when you look at the required experience, there are going to be there are going to be uh, bullet points or, re or requirements one to ten or whatever they are. Some of them they're going to say they're they're going to say required. Some of them are going to say desired. Okay, that that's all fine. If they are not required, then don't worry about those. For the ones where the employer says it's required, here's what I want you to do: look at the list of requirements, and then look at the look at the things that are. Uh, uh, hardcore requirements such as you need X years of experience using this tool or you know you need to have managed X people or things like that where it's like completely measurable if you are within 75% of that go ahead and reply so if they're looking for four years and you got three go if you got two and you're a superstar go Okay, so that kind of stuff. If you have the foundational traits, meaning if they say, um, we want you to have particular sales acumen, or we want you to have sold, for example, uh, these kinds of products, but you've sold other kinds of products, you have a selling skill and you have a methodology. Even though you haven't sold that particular product, your foundational traits and your methodology and your general expertise is appropriate that counts so the more of those you can stack up the the, the more i would want to submit my resume so if they say well you need to have sold uh you know consumer product goods before but you haven't sold consumer product goods you sold software i would still apply because you're a seller and you will adapt to that product or that service and if they say well, we're looking for somebody with 10 years of experience but you have eight that's okay go ahead and go in so that's how i would look at it am i within shouting distance of their hardcore requirements and do i do i have a uh, uh, capabilities that map to these other skills that they're requiring or that they desire if you can do that then what i would do is um, by the way, uh, I sent an email out to my entire community a week ago uh, about my four-step applicant tracking system beater formula for your resume. And I would watch, I recommend watching uh, three secrets to get your resume noticed so that you have an insider's view of how your resume is reviewed. And then what I do is I give you my resume uh, content builder as a gift. The thing is awesome because there's a resume template I go through each section of the resume, like the career profile, the career highlights, the professional experience, and so on. I tell you exactly what to put in there. I tell you the exact subjects, and then I teach you how to basically generate that content. And then, and then there's a there's a journal in the back that that shows you uh, how to get the information that you should put in the resume. Do that, and then if uh, if you go to jobscan.co slash andrew dash lasavita, I probably should have this link in the um, in the description check out uh, my recommendation for job scan go through my referral link it's it is free but let them know I sent you and and then run your resume through job scans uh, programs there's a number of different free services that they offer and it'll give you a percentage match and then what it'll do is it'll also give you tips as to how to amend your resume uh, to be more in alignment with what that particular job description is and the other thing that job scan will do is it will let you know uh, if if you actually take the link from the job uh, posting and you put it in uh, job scan will actually let you know what which applicant tracking system the company is using and what uh, resume uh, suggestions on your resume of what to do and not to do things like don't use tables here don't use this you know this this system doesn't like that and so amend it this way and what you'll do that way is if you're fighting with the applicant tracking system that's a great formula for you to use uh, to get you know to get it past there so that's that's my view on that and that that's a great that's a great question folks I I and Carla thank you for asking it 
but that's how I would look at a job description to know. Uh, but but also but also make sure that you like the company. Go back to all the other things that I teach you about your self awareness, your requirements, what you need, evaluating the company, and so on before you submit that that resume. Anand, hey to you. Um, Alpha Mega, good to see you again. Sunshine. All right, here we go. Ooh. Mm. Have you guys seen the? Wait, have you seen the leadership podcast? We study leaders. Jim Vasilopoulos runs this. Jim, every time I take a sip, you owe me eight thousand dollars if you're watching. Um, but this is a pretty good leadership podcast, folks. I'm going to be doing one here in a couple of months with them. Um, so he sent me a cup as a thank you, which and I love him, and you should check him out. Okay, Sunshine, how would you provide details on your coaching services? I am a potential client. Oh, hi. Would I? Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes. Uh, folks, actually, Sunshine, thank you. Uh, I don't advertise this a ton. So you all who, especially even if you've been following me for a long time, uh, I don't advertise a ton about my coaching services. It's expensive. Uh, it's $2,500. There, for the $2,500, you get five major sessions with me. This is, by the way, this is a, I, I do multiple types of coaching. Uh, jobs, the, this, I'm talking about the job search coaching. I also do high performance coaching, leadership coaching, that kind of stuff. Uh, some people hire me to elevate their performance in their, um, in, in, their, in their job. But if you are looking and speaking about hiring me for job search coaching, uh, or something of that nature, there's five major sessions that we go through that you get for the $2,500. Uh, there's you get all access to all of my training programs and all the tools and all that good stuff. You get all, a year's worth of, of coaching in my ongoing monthly coaching as well. But those five sessions are broken down by all the all the starting stuff, all the self awareness stuff that we need to go through. Your defense, who you are, where you want to be, if you want to make a career change or a job change. How, what's the right route? What direction should we go? How do we position you for success? How, how do you know how to evaluate that? We go, we move on into all of your marketing material. That's the resume, the cover letters, LinkedIn, but it's really, it's branding. It's so it's, it's beyond uh, what you might see in my job search boot camp or something of that nature, but it's very, obviously very personal to you. The third thing that we, we, we talk about is bringing you to market. So how do you actually locate, identify, target, and get into the company that you want? And then we work on interviewing and negotiating and all the other stuff with ultimately securing. That's just a guideline though. I have to tailor that based on your particular situation, um, based on your particular situation. And, and by the way, actually this is, um, Kara just beeped me. Uh, what I'm speaking about is the one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you are, so Sunshine, if you are asking about my coaching services as opposed to my coaching online training programs, that's what group, that's what I'm talking about. So it's, and, and it's very tailored and it's, it's, it's very back and forth. You also get basically carte blanche access to me. So it's not, I'm not like a, a lawyer or a psychologist where, you know, okay, the meter starts to run and that's it. You basically, you pay for the program. You pay me to get you where you want to go. So, and I could give you much more insight on that. Um, and it, it also depends on who you are and your situation. So what, if, if anybody's actually interested in that, the process is go in and fill in. I just asked you 10 quick questions. What's your name? What's your phone number? Where are you? What's your, what's your issue? A few other things. I get an email. I email you back and then we start to have a dialogue and then we see if the one-on-one -on -one coaching is the right thing for you. And then, and then if it is, and then a lot of people will engage and some will, will not. The expense is a deterrent for a lot. Uh, the expense itself is, is why I created the Job Search Boot Camp. The Job Search Boot Camp uh, takes 80% of what I teach in my one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching and it, it's out in a group format. And we do it, we do it live like this. It, we, it's also recorded. And then you have access to all the tools and all the stuff in the Malwalk Academy and the 12 months of ongoing coaching. So for, for $500 or $1,000, or there's actually even a new, new element to the boot camp, it's much less expensive, much more cost effective. You don't get the the one-on-one -on -one time, you know, 10 hours of one-on-one -on -one time with me uh, like you do in the one-on-one -on -one coaching. 
but it's still very, very effective and you get a lot of me. But some people just like the one-on-one. -on -one. I have a lot of people and most of them are very senior in the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, you know, they, they, they see the value, but they also have the money. It, it, like I said, it's expensive. So, and I appreciate that that's not something that's accessible to everybody, but it's a, it's a wonderful service. I've been having a great luck with it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm meeting with somebody next week. She wants to open her own business. So I meet, I have a lot of salespeople who want to be the best salespeople. I have C-level folks who want to get to a higher level or make their company better. I coach on that stuff too. So there's a ton of stuff uh, that you can do and it, you know, and it can be an ongoing relationship as well. So I, I hope that helps. Uh, you know, but if you got any questions, just, you know, or email me, you know, e either which way. But if you fill in the, if you fill in the form, then I email you back and we, we go from there. Okay. Roxana, when is the best moment to ask employer questions for us to use in our benefit? Um, oh, Hey, let me, let me, let me. Hey, when is best moment to ask employer questions for us to use in our benefit? I like to build a future scenario for them to imagine how great I will be if they take me. Roxana, great question. Uh, I want to point you and everybody else to last week's, I think it was last week's session on how to ask questions in a job interview. And one of the best questions that you can ask in a job interview is if, if I take this job or you give me an offer and I accept it and I come to work here, in one year, what will success look like? What will I have accomplished specifically that you would consider a raging success? If you can get them to speak about that and give you the, the very detailed uh, accomplishments, quotas, projects, whatever it is that they want done, then what you do is you walk them through how you would achieve that. Then you shift the discussion from their evaluation of you to them imagining what it would be like to have you as an employee. We went into all this last week. Actually, I don't know if you, I don't remember your name um, being there last week, but if you check out last week's, it's in that, it's in that session. Hey folks, all right, wait, where are we? 11.52. If you're loving this, don't forget, hit the thumbs up. The link to the the link to the uh, to the interview intervention book is in there. These are flying off the shelf, and I only ordered a few thousand copies. And I'm a little worried because it takes six weeks to print this every time I need to reprint them. So if you want them now, get in there and get it. It's only seven bucks. Uh, it's it's a deal. All right, Sea Lion. Oh hey, Sea Lion from Israel just got freed up. Great. Uh, hey, by the way, C Line, great to have you in the interview intervention on interview intervention relaunch team. Nick McKay, are you talking about live video interviews or a taped interview? Nick, I would do this for both. Either which way, mom, say hi to dad. All right, Rob is Robert is clarifying, but I would I would do it for both. But yes, I did predominantly. I meant live interaction, but I would use the same principles for recording. Evan Vargas from the big old state of Texas. You just defended your masters. Do I tell employers that I have or will have it? Yes, you will have it. Same question uh, on the resume. Yes, it's coming uh, or put the date or expected date or to be completed. And do I, if you are trying, if you're going for your PhD, uh, if you are already a PhD uh, student, you know, which you are obviously not. Um, uh, no, I, I don't, I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't say anything about something that you might plan on doing. Uh, if they ask you, do you plan on doing it? And you genuinely know you will do it no matter what, tell them you will. If you're not sure, say you're not sure. Okay. Roxana, how to ice break, who should start, how should be the introduction in a video interview? So that's a great question. So how do you start the video interview? Just say hello. Let them lead. They should lead. They should tell you what they need. Um, so, you know, that's what I would do. Just wait. Hi, I'm excited to be here. Glad we can get together. Rick Perlacki, my boot camper buddy. Great. Uh, yeah, you love the makeup. Try, I mean, just telling you. you. Had to put a little powder on the forehead once. <laughs> All right. Jules. All right. 
<laughs> Both Wet n Wild and Milani drugstore brands make fabulous translucent mattifying powders. You can get each for under eight bucks. And I'm guessing that my friend from Cleveland, Julia, will is knows what she's talking about. Up, oh, Mary Jo. Mary Jo is here. She's a boot camper too. Oop, I lost it. Hang on. Where was I? Oh, sorry, folks. Sometimes I slip. Oh, shoot. Oh, there we go. All right. Rocky Mountain, you're welcome. Mallory. Mom. Yeah. Wait, did I miss Rocky Mountain last? What happened there? Did I miss something? Kara, let me know. Let me know if I... Did I miss something? Kara, let me know if I missed something there. Oh, I think I did. Okay, wait. Sorry, folks. Okay, I'm back. I'm, at, I'm back at 1122. Mary Jo, great to see you. She's a boot camper. Mallory, good to see you. Mark Peckney. Oh, yeah, it's good stuff. All right, wait, you guys are just... Okay, pulp included. What does it mean... If the company you're interviewing with tells you there's been a development and then let you know that there's another similar position, they wonder if you'd be interested in. Pulp included, that's a great sign. That's a great sign because if a company is asking, might you be interested in another position, that's them telling you that they want you in the company. And that's, 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 that's cool to know. That's cool to know, and that's a great sign. It's really a great sign. And at the end of the day, you join a company, you don't join a job. And if you join the right company, you don't have the job you joined for for very long. And I mean that in a good way because good companies know how to elevate the career of their of their employees. So I, I love it. I, I love that. Great sign. Uh, so, oh, now, actually, Pulp, that's great. How do you prepare for that? Well, uh, what I would what I would say is... If they sprung that on you, uh, hey, I'm trying to figure out if they sprung that on you beforehand or in or during the interview. If they spring it on you during the interview, uh, you should be completely, uh, you know, you should have your requirements confirmed and you should know the questions you want to ask. The questions you want to ask, uh, um, and by the way, if you didn't see last week's uh, show, go back and watch how to ask questions in a job interview. If they, if they pulled this on you before the interview, you can prepare for it. If they sprung it on you during the interview, if you've prepared your questions properly, you should be able to shift and just ask a question about what the responsibilities are of that new position or the posi this new position, get some information about it, and, and respond accordingly. And if, you are, if, if they say to you, hey, you're here now, by the way, flash, uh, that job is no longer good. This one is what we want to talk to you about. Uh, before you start telling stories, telling them about yourself, doing all that stuff, you are you are within your right to ask, can you give me some information about that position so if I'm sharing my background, I can make sure I share it as it relates to this position, which I obviously was unaware of. That's fair. And they will do that. So they will give you some information first. And my guess is that was naturally what they did. Um, so that's that's how I would prepare for that. You almost don't need to prepare for that. If you do all the things that I mentioned about preparing for an interview, and 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 one of the things I didn't mention this um, in the in the in the lesson, I did a video. Um, oh God, I don't know if it was last year or earlier this year, about the ten steps. Uh, to prepare for job search success, or uh, sorry, job interview success. So basically 10 steps to prepare for your job interview. That's a live office hours. Go watch that. If you do all of that, you'll be in great shape. When you go into the interview, you'll be in order. And so you'll, you'll, you'll be prepared. Giuseppe, great to see you from Spain. Rocky Mountain Lass. Oh, Rocky Mountain Lass. That's what they were congratulating you about. Thanks to Andy's suggestions. I got an offer and I, you are finally employed. I love that. I'm glad you're here so I could yell into the camera at you that yeah, I'm excited and congratulations. And thanks for sticking it out. And, and I'm, I'm thrilled my stuff helped you. I really am. And I'm glad. Um, I, I, I love that I see 
uh, you you all here after you get your job uh, jobs secured that you stay with me because I'm doing a lot of job search heavy stuff right now but in the next month I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff that is career development heavy too so I got a lot of great new stuff for you guys who are newly employed or just folks that are with me that want to get more out of their job so I, 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 I love uh, love that and I'm thrilled and uh, Sea Lion, great to have you. Anand from India, great to have you. Phil, glad you're here. Uh, Jules Z, we went through that because I slipped, my hand slipped on the chat, um, but I'm, I'm thrilled there. Um, Romania, Roxana, you are welcome from Romania. That's, that's awesome. I just, I love how small the world is. Um, all right, Chris Johnson got certified. How do I? Okay, wait. Got certified in HVAC and trying to get out of current job, but have not been in the field. How do I sell myself to a company I have been schooling, but no field experience? So uh, when you don't, when you have a gap. So for for Chris or anybody else, this happens a lot, right? You you have a gap, and you want to break into to something. Schooling is awesome because that's going to teach you. I mean, it's still schooling, but it's still some experience in, in, in doing the trade. Uh, what I always do is you need a, you need a combo of stuff that you can point to for the uh, organization so that they recognize that the combination of what you've done makes you suitable and a good fit for what they're hiring. So what I mean by that is if you got any uh, schooling, uh, trade, trade schools, certifications, anything that, and I know a lot of technologists, they take certifications before they actually do any of the work in the, in the, in the program, and same kind of thing with you. But then what you need to do is look at the job and look at the, what I call capabilities. So those are, those are the foundational traits that make uh, a good emp employee at that, at that particular job. So it's, it's, it's more like, you know, your leadership skills, your organizational skills, your whatever, your customer service skills, whatever might be required to do your field job effectively, look back at your experience and see which of your particular experience maps to those capabilities. You want to be able to highlight for the employer that you have great capabilities that make you foundationally solid for that, even though you don't have the experience, and couple that with the schooling that I just got, that makes me a good candidate, and that's how you need to you need to make that change. The other thing is, if there's any way to get that experience, even if you need to volunteer or get in with I don't know, you know what the I don't know the particulars about that field too much, but that's what I would do. Uh, Michelle Middleton, you are welcome for the Facebook group. That's just awesome fun. Uh, let's see, and all right, Jules can't help it. I'm a total makeup junk. <laughs> You guys are killing me. Just killing me. All right, congrats. My mom's congrats, congratulating Rocky Mountain Lass. I got to tell you, I won the parents' lottery, folks. I'm telling you. All right. Uh, sea line. All right. I'm just trying to look for... So Mallory is asking, and I think we commented on this already, uh, will you be doing any recommendations for video interviews with pre-recorded questions? I, I would do the same thing. There's, there's not a ton of difference. Um, I would treat it like you were actually talking to a person. And I think I caught that one before. Kyle, Kyle is a college student or master's student in the boot camp and just got a job. And you are welcome, my friend. Hey, I'm waiting on your ROI numbers, man. Come on, send me that email. All right. Uh, Madupe, what is your advice on on information interview for a job seeker. Um, I think you were asking, and I get this question a lot about informational interviews. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't really know the point. I, I, if you are interacting with somebody, you are being interviewed. You, you are, you are being interviewed. So, um, you know, I would treat an informational interview the same way I would treat any other interview and you might have less information about the company, but you'd have less information going into your first interview. You'd have just as much information. So I would, I mean, I would approach it the same way. 
Um, Roxana, should I send sent the address of the Skype before the interviewer? Uh, sure. I mean, you, you should be coordinating with the recruiter or the human resources people about your Skype address or your Google Hangouts address or whatever, you know, whatever they're using. And a lot of companies, a lot of companies have video platforms that they will just say, click a link here and open it up and, and, and we'll be, we'll be interacting. Um, Robert, Robert Sarlo, Robert Sarlo, good to see you. Not familiar with your name, so welcome. Maybe if you're a first timer, maybe not. Um, why do you think video interviews are more popular now and not 10 to 15 years ago when the tech was invented? Robert, uh, that's because, in in my opinion, um, it's it's companies are coming to the realization that they can take advantage of this. Uh, most organizations are not quick to adopt new technologies. How about when social media uh, kicked off? I mean, some companies haven't even gotten there yet. So it, it, it's it's just a delay, and 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 I don't. You know, I mean, I think it's kind of par for the course that it just takes a lot, it companies a lot of time. Um, but what also happens is as time goes on, and, and, and you, know, you know this, I mean, technology becomes cheaper, not more expensive. It becomes more accessible. Uh, I can do things now. I can do things now as a trainer, like with the training site. So if you all have not been to the Mile Walk Academy, I am the one and Kara helps me too. Uh, I'm the one that builds that and you don't need a lot of tech skills. Now, uh, five years ago, if I wanted to be a trainer and deliver that, that, uh, these videos to you, especially all you that are in the Mile Walk Academy where you see the videos, the posts, the website and all that, that stuff's made available and easy. And now I could take advantage of that. Even though trainers were training five years ago, it's just now the world is now easier uh, from that standpoint, it's the same thing with, with, uh, with, with video interviews. And the other thing that, Robert, that you have to keep in mind is 10 or 15 years ago, even though you know computers were around, and, but not everybody had a laptop at home. Not everybody had some of these things. So now that that's just more common, it's a lot easier for companies to know that they can take advantage of that. So it, it's also a two-way two -way street. Hey, Linda. Linda Howard from England, who spells her name the same way as my wife. Great to see you. Uh, nice W75, you're welcome. Uh, Cecilia, you're welcome. You, uh, nice W again. I have a network, just seems, in my opinion, you can't do too much if they've already chosen a buddy. Oh, that's, that's true. Um, true, actually, true. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. And you had an interview the other day and was enthusiastic and motivated and it showed. I never know how their thoughts processes are though. Well, I don't either, but i am got my fingers crossed for you. Mallory, you're welcome. Uh, I know it is hard. And Nelson is here. Andrew, don't think, don't you think the video interviews could be in some cases insanely subjective? I think interviews are sub sub insanely subjective uh, Nelson, and it will be like that for all time. But if you if you if you do what the stuff I'm teaching you, that's how you neutralize the subjectivity. You got to be so good that they can't turn you away. So good that they can't turn you away. All right, Rocky Mountain. Hey, oh, Sasha from Ireland slash Belgium. Good to see you, Kristen. Kristen, new boot camper, got a question. When a job posting sounds a lot like you but the required experience is a fra fraction of what you have. Okay, so you're overqualified. Is it worth applying for, or is the pay tab typically too junior? G Kristen, great question, great question. So folks, you like a company, you see a job opening, and you, are, you could totally crush it. It's you know what you did five years ago. Go ahead and apply anyway. And in the cover letter, what you want to make sure that you do uh, is highlight that you recognize that you have quite a bit of experience. I'm very interested in getting into the organization. That's the most important thing for me. So I noticed this was an opportunity to do that. And the other thing that you want to add at the bottom of your cover letter is I look forward to speaking with you if you feel I would be a suitable candidate for this or any other position in your organization. So you're looking for ways to get into the interview. Don't worry about the job description. In the interview, what you can do is sell yourself 
you'll be so great they can't turn you away. Uh, you can also uh, uh, talk with them about whether they can augment the role that puts it more in line with the value you contribute. If there's another role that they think you'd be suitable for, any of those will work. By the way, some people, when I say at the end, um, I, I, I have it, most of my cover letters and I know the four sentence cover letter at the end says, I look forward to hearing from you if you feel I would be a suitable candidate for this or any other role in your company. And I got some comments on my YouTube channel like, well, you look like a, a moron if you don't know if you're suitable and this or that. And last week I got three emails from people who said they used that, now have new jobs that were not for the position that they applied for, but for some other position that the you know, recruiter thought what they were suitable for. So what you're doing is you're saying, you're just saying to the organization, hey, I, I only know so much about you. I, I'm, I saw something online, I did some research, I sent you a letter and I sent you my resume. I'm interested in joining a great organization. And that's most important to me. And you know more about your company. So if you know of other positions in your organization, and you got to remember that they might have positions brewing that they haven't publicized yet. Uh, all, they might want to replace somebody that they are not publicizing. There's a million things that you don't have any idea about. So adding these little clauses at the end that open up their thinking can can really pay some dividends. So So the short answer to your question is, get it in there, get the resume in there. And then the longer answer is just use a few of these tactics. Um, and Kristen, I also have a video clip on my YouTube channel about how to answer the overqualified question in a job interview. It's like 90 seconds, check that out. It, I peeled it out of a really early coach cast uh, session that I did out of my monthly coaching. Um, but it's, it's, it's a good one because we get it a lot. All right, Mallory, great. Chrissy D. Oh, Rocky Mountain just saying he had an HR person. Okay, Chrissy D, hi, back to you too. There are many per diem and part-time jobs out there, but I'm looking for full-time. I offered, if offered, should I just take a part-time until a full-time appears? Chrissy, here again, um, that's for you, to, for, you to, for you to answer, for you to answer. So I don't know your situation. I don't know if... Uh, you're single and you don't have, you know, you need to earn the money to make the ends meet, then yes. Uh, maybe you're married and you have another income possibly to keep the household afloat. It's really personal uh, preference, but I am a fan of having um, some type of action going on in my life, whether that's part-time or volunteer or something of that nature if I'm in the middle of a job search because that gets you out away from the job search and it also gets you engaging with other people that might be helpful to talk to about your search or maybe network with or whatever. So I, 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 I can't answer that specifically. It's based on your situation, but that's how I would think about it. Okay, great to see you, Mallory. Great to see you, Rocky Mountain. Um, oh God. Okay. So wait, Julia is saying only 2,500 for five sessions. That's not expensive at all. I looked at a few coaches in Cleveland and it was 3k for 90 days. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I, I really have, uh, have, uh, optimized what I think is the right expense. Um, and it's not, by the way, it, if you're thinking 500 a session, um, it's not, it, it's not the way I would, I would look at my one-on-one -on -one coaching because you get, you get the sessions where we dig deep. You get the boot camp. You get all the other training material and all the resources, and all the templates and all the stuff. You get access to me when you need me, and you get a year's worth of ongoing coaching and a bunch of other stuff that I don't tell you. So it's, you know, some people don't bat an eye, and some people think it's ridiculous. But I'll tell you, those people are they're making out. So and it's I got a pretty good track record of getting them where they want to go. All right. Um, all right. Let me see here. All right. Twelve. Well, let's hit it on twelve fifty, folks. Give, give me. I'm gonna give you a couple more. Don't forget. Don't forget. Grab this little baby for seven bucks. Shipping and handling. And if you're loving this, give me the thumbs up. Share it on out. And I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be doing some cool stuff next couple of weeks. We've got. Um, we've got uh, a little bit more on interviewing. I got one for the executives, and we got another surprise one. But. Uh, but anyway, just, uh, you know, I love having you. I love doing this stuff. Let me take a couple more of these. Tony R. 
Tony R at 51? I'm 51 too, my man. All right. You try to hide your age a little bit by minimizing years of experience. What if the first 26 years were with one company? Should you still show you were there between 1985 and 2001? And Tony, I if it's me, if it's me, I show it. Okay, I show it um, because that's a big that's a big chunk. Uh, what you could do, what you could do, well, you can't really because it's it's it. You know, you're only getting about seven years. I would show it. I would. I would show it. That's what I would do. Okay. Um, Vinit, this is a good question. How can I get attention from the employer through online application? So I would make sure that your 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 it, the magic in the in the submission, folks, is the resume and the cover letter. And so, then it, I would I would watch if you have not seen it yet. Uh, my free webinar called Three Secrets to Get Your Resume Noticed." It's a it's really a good one. I give you a resume content builder. It is the only place in my entire free platform that you can get this robust download. And if you follow what I'm teaching, and you also watch the How to Build Your Ultimate Professional Resume video. It's a 18 minute video that I have on my YouTube channel and on my blog and do that. That's free, that's all free. Um, you know, I, I, I think you're gonna, you, you're gonna get through that online application pretty effectively. Uh, obviously I have deeper levels of coaching with the, with the, tra- you know, with the boot camp, uh, which is really a lot of fun and that's a huge community, but, um, but that's what I would do. All right, let me take another one here. I'm just zipping down. Oop. Dang, I hate when that happens. Where was I? Kathy's here. Oh, this is great. Okay, hang on. All right, hang on. Oh, sorry, folks. God, I don't know why my computer does that. Here we go. Okay. Uh, Rocky Mountain last. Andy, they love the what would be the most surprising thing. All right, folks. Uh, what Rocky Mountain Lass is referring to is last week when we had the session about how to ask questions, one of my questions was, if I was to work here, if I was to come work here within one week, what would be my biggest surprise? That's a, that's a, that's a great one. I love that one. I love that one. All right, buddy, I'm so happy for you, man. I know, I know it gets rough. I know it gets rough after, after a while with all those rejections. Okay, let me see. What do we got here? Oops, sorry. All right, same question. Greg, I think I got I think I got that from Tony R. Renaissance man, Andy wrote the Bible on China. <laughs> My favorite inner book, and I have read tons of them. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. I mean, it's been a lot of fun. It's helped a lot of people, and I'm glad you're on the, the team. I'm glad you're on the relaunch team. All right, here we go. Alpha Mega. Let's take this one and hit. All right. Is having to take a job outside my field temporarily while taking upskill classes, getting married, etc., still the kiss of death regarding my career standing and resume strength going forward? So, Alpha Mega Radio Channel and all of you out there, here's how I look at this. You got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. And if somebody is sitting in front of me and said, I took a job because I needed to take a job and I'm taking classes and I'm rebranding myself and I upskilled and I got married and I had a lot going on in my life and now I'm back in the game, I'd be cool with that. I'd be cool with that. Um, the way I look at it because when I look at an individual that I want as an employee at my organization, all of the stuff that they do throughout their life matters. The fact that you were willing to do that matters. Now the issue for you is how do you tell that story and how do you package it uh, and you need to do that effectively so I don't you know we've got somebody in the boot camp I don't know if he's actually on this uh, this session awesome salesperson uh, he he kind of did that and kind of got away from it and tried his own thing and now wants to get back and he's getting interviews uh, we of course we did his resume and we helped him with the story 
and I don't know if he's on here, but um, but Chris, it you know he he's getting the interviews, and he he basically did the same thing you did. Now he's obviously got a lot of coaching from me because he's in the program, but um, but no, it's I I I think it's I do I would not call it a kiss of death. I would not. Okay. Um, Hey, Kathy. Hey, Duda. Okay. All right, folks. Listen, I have, it's 1220. I have got to run to a meeting. I love this stuff. All right. Don't forget. Don't forget. Grab this guy. The link is in the, uh, is in the description. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button if you're loving it. Give me a share. Send it out. You are my very best source to help new people. So, so give it a shout out on, on social media. Uh, I'm going to see you next week. We haven't set the time yet for next week, but I will see you here next Thursday. And until I do, have a great week, lots of luck, and I'm so honored that you help me or allow me to help you build a career you love. See you next week.